Chapter Two of Christmas Eve at Swamp's End by Norman Duncan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Two A Gift Neglected. Well, well, there was only one baby at Swamp's End, and that baby Patty Batch had adopted. In her mind, of course, quite on the sly nobody could adopt pale peter's bartender's baby in any other way and here was christmas come again day gone beyond the last waving pines in a cold flush of red and gold christmas eve here at last patty batch's soft arms were still wanting there were a thousand kisses waiting on her tender lips forgiving her voice was all attuned to crooning sweetest lullabies, but her heart was empty, save for a child of mist and wishes. It was dark now, but though the wind was still rollicking down, there was no snow blowing, and the shy stars were winking wide-eyed upon the busy world, and all the myriad mysteries it exhibited out of doors. The gift of silk and fawn-skin was finished, a perfect gift, fashioned and accomplished with all the dexterity Patty Batch could employ. Just as if, she had determined, it was for my own baby. And Patty Batch, after an agitated glance at the clock, quickly shooed and cloaked and hooded her sweet and blooming little self and she listened to the lusty wind, and she put a most adorable little nose out of doors to sense the frosty weather, and she fluttered about the warm room in search of her mittens, and then she turned down the lamp, chucked a log in the stove, put on the dampers like a prudent householder, and, having made quite sure that the door was latched, scampered off to town in vast and twittering delight with the nipping frost, with the roistering wind, the fluffy snow, the stars, the whole of God's clean world, and with herself, too, and with the blessed night of the year. She was exceedingly cautious, and she was not observed, not for the smallest flash. The thing was accomplished in mystery. Before she was aware of it, before her heart had eased its agitation, she was safely out again, and there, in plain view, on the table, in Pale Peter's living room, behind the saloon, lay the gift of silk and fawn skin for Pale Peter's bartender's baby, a Christmas mystery for them all to solve as best they could. Patty Batch peeked in at the window. I wonder, she mused, if they'll ever, if they'll ever in the world find out I done it. Presently Pale Peter's bartender came in. This was Charlie the infidel. Patty Batch rose on her cold little toes the better to observe. The frost exploded like pistol shots under her feet she started. Really, the little mite began to feel, and rather exquisitely, like a thief in the night. There was another explosion of frost as she crept nearer her peak-hole in the glowing window. Whew! How deliciously mysterious it was! Nothing much, however, happened in Pale Peter's living-room to continue the thrill. Charlie the infidel, in haste, chanced to brush the fawn-skin cloak off the table. He paused impatiently to pick it up, and to fling it back in a heap, whereupon he pressed on to the bar. That wasn't very thrilling, you may be sure, but Charlie the infidel, after all, was only a father and Patty Batch, her courage not at all diminished, still waited in the frosty shadow, quite absorbed in expectation. Entered then Mrs. Bartender, a blonde, bored, novel-reading little lady in splendid array. First of all, as Patty Batch observed, she yawned. Secondly, she yawned again. 
and she was about to attempt the extraordinary feat of yawning a third time, and doubtless would have achieved it, when her washed blue eyes chanced to fall on the fawn-skin coat, with its lining of golden-brown silk shimmering in the lamplight. She picked it up, of course, in a bored sort of way, and she was positively on the very verge of being interested in it, when, would you believe it, she attacked the third yawn, or the third yawn attacked her, and, however it was, the yawn was accomplished with such dexterity, such certainty, and with such satisfaction to the lady, that she quite forgot to look at the fawnskin cloak again. "'By George, she's tired!' Patty Batch exclaimed to herself. Patty Batch sighed. She sighed twice, in point of fact, the second sigh, a great long one, discovering itself somewhere very deep within. And then she went home, disconsolate. End of chapter 2 A Gift Neglected